Cheech here with Fly Fish Food. Haven't shaved or cut my hair in months and months. It's because I've been in the dungeon. This messy desk tying Amy's end. Okay, this is a pattern that's been around for quite a while. This is the Amy's Ant. And big shout out to Mr. Jack Dennis for this pattern. Who invented it back in 1827. Something like that. Anyway, it's been around a long time. There are lots of variations on it. We're going to tie uh, just kind of one variation on color with it. It's a, it's a super cool, buoyant pattern. It's a little bit different from a, a Chernobyl. So... It's going to use two pieces of foam. I've selected brown and root beer, or brown and a lighter brown. And I'm going to tie in the, the brown color first. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut the, the back portion of this to a little bit of a point. And I'll lay it so that it hangs over this hook quite a ways. And I'll just put a few securing wraps on that. And then for this piece on the back, I'm going to cut a V into the foam and just lay that down just kind of like that. So one thing I like to do on these flies is to get the legs to splay out a little better is I like to make a little bit of a band of thread. So I'm going to advance my thread just a little bit through this foam just like that and I'll cover that all up with thread so this is where I'm going to put in the first set of legs you can use whatever legs you want I just have some barred legs that I like and uh, you can tie them in a bunch of different ways I just like to tie it in on the far side with a few wraps adjust that a little bit and then just loop it around. I'm going to loop it around in between the pieces of foam to keep it out of the way and tie that in over there. So once those pieces of um, leg are tied in, this is the color of dubbing I'm going to use up at the head and I'm just going to wrap a little tiny bit of dubbing around that to cover up the thread wraps, but also to uh, keep the legs spread a little bit. So the body of this one has chenille and hackle. Um, I, I'm using ice dub chenille, you can use whatever you want. But the hackle, usually you would take a nice dry fly hackle, tie it in and then trim it. As you can see on this fly right here. But instead of doing that, I'm actually going to use a Coq de Leon Rooster Cape. And this is a really cool color that we got from old Dr. Whiting. And he gave us a lesson on Coq de Leon. And you can see that it's a, it's a little bit shinier than most hackle. So we're going to pluck off a piece of that. It doesn't have to be the same size that you, you would want for this. So it can be a really big piece of hackle, just like that. And I'm going to tie that in tip first. And it, it doesn't have to be super clean because you're going to just trim it all up. So just tie that in as best you can without trapping too much other stuff down. Get rid of the excess. And then I'll advance my thread about to right there. I'm going to have a head on this fly. So, I'll just uh, wrap my chenille forward now. <clears throat> and I'll trim that off. Okay, so I'll just take that hackle. It doesn't have to be pretty at all. And just start wrapping that through the chenille. And twist all up if you want it to. Just tie that off. All right. I'm just using these new loon scissors. They got a long blade so that I can trim the foam. But for this part, I'm going to switch over to 
a smaller scissor um, and the first cut that I'm going to do is just cut the hackle flush across the top. Now from here, and it helps if you have a rotary vise such as the purple popsicle Renzetti Master, but I'm just going to trim those hackles maybe about a hook gap long on those. All right, so it just kind of makes a bristly imprint in the water, and that's what you want. And you can see how shiny that Coq de Leon is. Um, anyway, that's uh, that's the body. So from here, I'm going to take this rubber leg and trim it. Situate that body on the back. And then uh, what I like to do is just take one piece of foam bring it over and cinch it down and then advance my thread forward to the eye and catch it there wind all that down and pull the second piece of foam over and tie it down at the front and then wind back if you tie those in separately like that it will make it so that there, it's less prone to wrap or spin around the hook shank so I'll tie those in really well The next step is to add a little bit of crystal flash in the wing. If you've talked to Jack, you know that he likes to put crystal flash in the wings of his flies, and this one calls for rainbow crystal flash. Kind of a cool color. So I've got like five or six strands of it, and I'm just going to tie it in and then fold it over. If you do it that way, it won't pull out of the fly when you catch big donkey fish with this. So now we're going to add some uh, elk wing. Um, so this is just select cow elk. We're going to take a pretty sparse clump of it and uh, align the tips and tie it in. Alright, so I'm going to tie that in about like that. And I'll just catch the, the butt ends. And these are short enough now where I'm just going to wrap through those butt ends really well. And with good 140 to near thread, you can uh, really crank on it. Probably trim the flash up just a little bit. So I'll trim the butt ends now and that's all going to get covered in dubbing so it doesn't have to look super pretty okay that's super secure right there um, the one thing I notice is it's really easy to get too much elk hair on this so keep it fairly sparse you really don't need it to float the fly it's a very very buoyant fly as it is all right so uh, I'm going to take this uh, ice stub that I used for the back whichever color you want this happens to be golden brown and I'm just going to get enough to cover up the head of this fly So we've got the head nicely covered up. And all we're going to do now is just take this top piece of foam and fold it over and catch it down, cinch it up nice and tight. Make sure that not too much deer hair went over onto the sides and trim the foam off and then cut it to a point. very critical. If they don't have points right there, probably not going to catch fish. So the last step is just to tie in the last set of rubber legs. We'll do that the same way. And 
And you can always uh, take the legs and adjust them into the exact spot you want them. And for this, for these legs, I will also take a little bit of dubbing uh, to cover up the thread wraps and also to help splay the legs out a little bit. All right, so I'm, I'm finished with the fly. I will usually just put a hand whip finish. It's easier to do a hand whip finish on a big chunk like that. Um, as opposed to getting a tool over all of that. But if you use a hand whip finish, just make sure that you uh, put glue on it because they're not the most durable knots. So the last step, I'm gonna come in here and cut the head quite a bit longer than you'd think and uh, maybe a straight cut would work and then angle those off just like I said if you don't have the points it's not gonna work but anyway you can come in here and tweak the legs all you want but that wait not yet I gotta put some glue on it first that is the Amy's ant Everything for this fly can be purchased at flyfishfood.com. And if you go in there, you'll probably find a whole bunch of other stuff that you didn't know you needed, but you really do.